Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Virtual Engagement Ideas Summit. Today, our special guest joins us from Massachusetts. Alyssa Lorenza is originally from Connecticut, now living in Massachusetts and working at Endicott College as the Assistant Director of Student Activities, where she oversees student orgs, leadership initiatives, and wellness programs. While not at Endicott, uh, she can be found as the instructor of a spin or row class at a local YMCA. I like the Y. I'm a member. She is passionate about exercise and wellness and is able to utilize her group fitness and yoga certifications to connect with students. Please welcome to the stage, Alyssa. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited about what you're doing tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah. my Tell me my about friends that. are getting married in their backyard and um, right. organized a parade. So we'll be driving by to wish them well and see them in their wedding outfits. That's really great. Have they given you a certain speed that you're supposed to drive by? Like, please drive at 10 <laughs> miles an hour? That yeah. I don't know yet. I guess we're going to just go with the flow. They I planned this like two weeks ago. So. Oh, that's really great. But do you don't know, are, you, are they going to give you like a party bag or something? You don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Ah, it's so <laughs> exciting. I mean, but when you go to a drive-by wedding, do you, do you wash your car before you go? Do you, dress, no. do you dress up for a wedding? That's what I was wondering. I'm like, do I wear a dress? Do right. I? Right. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. But that's, that's so many fun ideas have come uh, in the last few months about, uh, you know, workarounds and making making stuff work for the current situation in which we're in which is why we are talking because you have really set a set a standard on, on your campus and for folks on other campuses who have mentioned you for being able to really connect with your students and specifically in your wellness programming right that's something that you've really fallen in love with and can you tell me a little bit about your wellness programs that you love the most yeah yeah. Um, so it kind of started on campus in the fall. Um, I had this dream of having a wellness fair and wellness Wednesday. So we kind of um, went running with that. So our clubs and organizations would sign up for a Wednesday um, and they would table outside of our dining hall. Um, so once we were virtual and online, um, we moved it to Instagram. So clubs and organizations would sign up for a Wednesday. They would choose a specific uh, part of the wellness wheel. So um, whether it was social, physical, emotional, environmental, intellectual, and the list goes on. Right, um, right, so right. They would be able to choose one of those and do something um, while also marketing their club. So a few ideas were um, for a physical, they created a workout plan or had a video on Instagram of a video that you could follow yeah. along and exercise to. Um, so that was kind of fun because it was able, I was able to still connect with the student organizations yeah. um, and they could also market their clubs because obviously like not being on campus, the connection to other students is a lot. On those Wednesdays on campus, would they, those clubs would facilitate an actual like in-person event and then uh, it is all seamlessly moved to Instagram. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. So you have to be a student to sign up for those, right? Or you could follow the Instagram, couldn't you? Yeah. I could, I could follow your Wellness Wednesdays and I could do as, to, as I'm told every Wednesday. Exactly. What is the Instagram um, address so that it's we can all- at you? EC Involvement. EC Involvement? Okay, Endicott College Involvement. That's great, I'm in, I got it. I'm gonna get so much more well this summer <laughs> uh, because of you, thank you. So the Wellness Wednesdays is a really cool one. One of the other ones that I, I think is super neat is your book club. Can you mm -hmm. tell me about your book club? Yeah, so um, when we moved virtual, we started to think of different ideas that we could um, do online that were different than what we were doing on campus, because I think that's what we're, students were expecting, that like events that were on campus would turn virtual and sometimes that just wasn't possible. Yeah. Um, and we noticed that students were really missing the connection to staff and other students. So I created a book club. I had about six students to begin with, and um, it was fun. It, it was more... Um, talking about each other and like what everyone was going through than like less talking yeah. about the book but it was a cool connection um, to just know that everyone was reading the same thing but also that once a week check in on how everyone was doing because I think from March to May was a really tough time for everyone. Were you meeting on Zoom? Yeah. So you it, you you could be reading at the same pace as somebody or not but you would <laughs> still get together with the book club so the mission really was it the book or was it the getting together? It was, yeah, it started with the book, but it, um, I like quickly realized it was more of the getting together, which was really right. nice. Right. Because that's, I think that's sort of from understanding you, the heart of what you're doing 
is to make connections. You're, you're, you're utilizing these other activities and other events as tools to make connections. Yes, right? for sure. There, there, I mean, there are other outcomes in the wellness programs. There are outcomes of learning a, a, from a good book, but really it's the connection that you're making virtually, which is super cool. Is the Discover Wellness Group different than the Wellness Wednesdays? Yeah, so the Discover Wellness Group um, came from uh, an idea that my supervisor had that we, um, each of us in our department, create a summer group so that we were still connecting with students over the summer. Uh, we were nervous that students weren't really going to have much to do this summer um, because their summer jobs were canceled and classes were done. So I created the wellness group. So I have a few students that we meet each week. Um, each week goes off of the wellness wheel, like I mentioned before. So. Yeah. Uh, for example, this week is spiritual, so the students were encouraged to meditate throughout the week, and then we'll reflect on it and do a meditation together. Last week was really awesome. Um, we did talked about emotional, and they journaled throughout the week, and the students said had a lot of positive feedback because they were actually like encouraged to do something and held accountable because of the group. So then that um, last Sunday we talked about resiliency and uh, what coping mechanisms look like, especially right now. How did you market that? Because this is something, this is an opt-in, right? Students can decide um, and they sign up for it. And then once they sign up for it, they get assigned to one of the groups. Yeah. Right? So can, can a student drop in now? Like, or can you, are you adding new members as you go? Uh, we haven't been, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. Um, we had sent out an email to all the students, including the incoming students, which, which I think is awesome. I have a student who's transferring and she already is coming into Endicott knowing a few people because of the summer groups. Each group has an advisor, right? Yeah, so each of them has a staff member um, and they're structured a little differently. Mine is more yeah. like run like the book club where we kind of just check in. Um, it's less coaching and more accountability, but the other ones... Um, there's a leadership one, so that's more coaching and educating on leadership skills. You could pick which one you wanted to go, right, as a student? Yep, and yeah. some are in more than one. If you were advising on how to start this on another campus, um, how did you how did you publicize it from the um, the Office of Student Activities? Did it just go out as an email saying, hey, who wants to be part of a, well, a wellness group this summer? Is that is that how simple it was? Yeah, we just sent an email. We really didn't even do much social media marketing um, just because they were bombarded with so many other things. Yeah. Um, interesting to like look at it in the fall. I think that we will definitely continue it because we've gotten a lot of positive feedback and students will still be kind of stuck in their room um, right. lacking that right. connection. So uh, we're looking to do it in the fall, but I think we'll do a lot more marketing for it, whether it's on campus marketing or on social media. Bouncing off that idea, I mean, w once you have that number of students and if your numbers increase and you have like two or three advisors working it, I mean, this is me brainstorming with you out loud, that you, you, then you create a curriculum that you can provide to the RAs or the orientation leaders so that if they're meeting with those groups, you could have a wellness element for every one of their meetings, but it's coming yeah, from, that. it's coming from Alyssa, like Alyssa's, <laughs> Alyssa's tips on wellness. Um, so that it, like, is. I can't imagine if having a few hundred people. One of the one of the nice parts about it is the intimacy of it, right? Right. Is that you're meeting with a small group over and over again, and and yeah, I I think that's such a cool idea. But incorporating wellness into and encouraging RAs and orientation leaders and any even clubs and orgs like give them pointers on wellness. Sorry, I'm just brainstorming out loud now. This no, is, I love that, and it's a good idea about. because I've been looking for things to do with the clubs and organizations, especially. Yeah. Um, we're encouraging them to have Zoom meetings in place of their in-person meetings. So I'm looking for things for them to do to engage yeah. the members. Well, some, I mean, sometimes folks just don't know what kind of content to have. They don't, they want to have a meeting, but they don't know that they need to have, like, right. one of the students that I talked to from a school in Chicago had a really neat idea. He's the president of SGA and every one of his meetings, I mean, sorry, every other one of his meetings is non-content. It's just social. So, but they have, you know, directed social activities in the meeting, but it's just mostly so that the SGA can bond, right? They have a lot of work to do, but they, they've they alternated their events, events I'm calling them, their meetings, um, so that they're, 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 they're getting to know each other better. Mm -hmm. And then they're productive, and then they're getting to know each other better. And that's a neat idea for, I think, for all organizations to, to build in the element of fun and getting to know each other, because it is... You know, this is our platform now. This is where we're getting to know each other. So it's neat. Um, you also mentioned your alumni office has done something fun. Um, can you tell me about that? 
Yeah, the alumni office has like really kicked off their virtual programming, which is awesome. Um, I'm lucky because I'm close by. So I went to Endicott, so I can usually, typically go to their alumni programs, but they've yeah. received a lot of positive feedback because everything's been virtual. So people all over the country um, in world have been coming to the event. So um, some of my favorites have been cooking classes because we do have a culinary class on campus. So our culinary yeah. professor has been leading cooking classes um, which is a personal favorite because he was my professor, but also because it gets us to be creative in our own homes. And I think that's yeah. cool too. Oh, right. So did, I mean, do they let you know in advance what kind of ingredients you might need for something? Yeah. So usually on Friday we get the recipe so that you can get it over the weekends. And then um, the class is typically on Tuesday. So how many meals do you think you've made so far? Um, I've only done two classes, but I think it also just gets me to be creative because then I start thinking, I'm like, oh, I made this sauce with that one recipe. I can use that again for something. Oh, else. you will. So that was the question. Like, is there something that you made that you're like, yeah, I'm totally doing this again? Yeah. I what, hated what, mushrooms what? before. And yeah. one of the recipe, recipes called for shiitake mushrooms. And now huh. I can't stop buying them. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Right. Yeah. That's a silver lining of us being uh, staying home, right? Right. I would have never realized that. Right? How fun. So we're learning a lot from you. I'm getting some good ideas. The Wellness Wednesdays. It's, I like the alliteration, right? So it's memorable. The book club is a great idea. But again, I mean, you're selecting books that are related to wellness or, or does it matter? Um, it doesn't matter. It's kind of funny. The first one was like a quick read, just kind of a fun, like chick flick book um, that yeah. was like really quick to read. Uh, the second book, um, we just read Murmur of Bees and it was really unintentionally um, all about a pandemic and oh. like a disease that was like made ever in quarantine. And the students were like, I th totally thought you picked it because of this. And I was like, I had no idea. The like description didn't include that. Um, right. So it's kind of funny to talk about that. Right, right. So to, to sort of su sum up all the things that you're doing, I'm looking at the list that I wrote down of all the things you're doing. All of them are really accessible, mm -hmm. right? So you don't have to, you don't have to have, you know, the, the, the one the alumni office is doing with the cooking, that's the only one where you need something else or even, you know, ordering the books on, on Amazon and sending them to the students. But like really all of these ideas are really something that anybody can implement on their own campus. So I really love that about that. Oh, one other thing that you talked about was virtual volunteering. Tell yeah. me, what, what so are you doing here? We work um, closely with our community service office and they've been doing an awesome job. Um, something I texted them the other day and I was like, you should totally call it virtual volunteering because it, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, so they had Zoom sessions on Fridays where they would all create cards um, to send to children or local hospitals or things like that. Um, and then they also had service challenges around your neighborhood. So they encouraged people to... Um, take a bag when they went out for a walk and clean up the trash around their neighborhood, writing letters to um, senior citizens and sending them to nursing homes and things like that. Yeah. Um, just connecting with people and also, but also volunteering in your community virtually or if you could in person. Yeah, that's neat. That's really neat. So, so the students that get involved, they're connecting with the students who are doing the project, but they're also creating a moment for the folks who are receiving the letter. So it's just all in all, it's just a, it's a big circle of love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for being here and sharing, sharing your knowledge. Any bits of advice that you'd give to another advisor on a small campus in the middle of Kansas or Texas? What's making you happy every day? What are you doing every day for yourself that's making you feel good? Um, I think it's just like working with your passions. I think that's something I really enjoy about working at Endicott is that I've always been encouraged um, and allowed to like work with my passion. So it wasn't until this year that I was able to really do health and wellness programming. Um, and so that's allowed me to really work with something I love to do. So it makes it like not work. Um, and I can connect with students on a different level than just um, talking to them about their clubs and orgs and how to run their organization. But I can talk to them about something that I'm passionate about. And I feel like when they sense that I'm passionate about it, they are more inclined to like connect with me on it. Yeah, that's very cool. Well, Alyssa, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for spending time with me and the rest of the world who get to watch our recording of this amazing interview. Um, look forward to seeing you again, and hopefully we'll get to see each other at a conference someday. And, Absolutely. And to everyone, be well, right? Be yeah. well with your wellness. Thanks <laughs> again. All right. You're welcome. Right, Have a great weekend. Bye.